Baptist. And uh, I want to talk this morning about trying again. If you've ever experienced defeat, you know how hard it is to pick yourself up and to go at it again. If you ever experienced a setback, you know that it can be, take a lot of courage to try again. I was reading about uh, the Israelites. They, they, they crossed the Jordan. They were going into the Promised Land. They had a good victory at first. At first sight, things were going pretty well for them. Then they hit a snag. Have you ever hit a snag? Sure you have. Have you ever had something interfere with your momentum or your life and it just kind of cropped up? You thought things were going okay and then all of a sudden maybe you were under attack or you felt under attack and something came your way. And you're here today wondering, do I have the energy to keep going? Do I have the strength to try again? Did you know that one of the biggest things that the enemy uses in your life is discouragement? The enemy tries to discourage you. Why? Because discouragement kind of taps the strength out of you. It keeps you from wanting to try again. Discouragement kind of takes the will out of uh, your life. God wants to help you today. God loves you. He knows that you make mistakes. God knows you're not a perfect individual. None of us here are. But that doesn't change God's love for you. Listen, my brother, my sister, God does love you the way you are. And I want to tell you that it may not be the way you want today, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be this way always. That's why you got to stay in Christ. That's why you got to keep trying. Thank you for coming to the, uh, the Lord's house and worshiping him. You know, that's, that's, that's good for you. It really is. It's good for your spirit, your soul. It's good for your future. When you step out of your will and you put God first, that's a good thing for your life. But I want to talk about uh, trying again. The Israelites, they came up to this second uh, 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 phase, and here's what happened. They thought they were going to take this, this uh, fight. They thought they were going to win the fight pretty easy, but what happened is they were routed. They, they fell behind. It didn't go as they thought. It didn't work out the way they thought. We've had that happen in our life thought something was going to work out, and then it didn't. It stopped. It kind of uh, came to an end. We hit a brick wall. Well, that's what it was in the scriptures. You know, whenever we say in the scriptures the, the, the children of God, what we're talking about, of course, was the Israelites. They were the, the chosen people. But did you know that you're the children of God today? So when we're looking in the Old Testament and reading a story, we're really reading your life today. You're the modern day children of God. You are. You're, you're God's people. And this story here is your story. So when we're talking, what we're trying to do is make sense out of some things that we're going through. That's what the scriptures are for. The scriptures are for to, to help us through so that we have an understanding of where we're at and what God is doing in our life. But in Joshua chapter 8, you could put it on. Oh, it's already on there. What happened was the children of Israel, they, they came up against uh, a brick wall and they started to get discouraged. As a matter of fact, they, they, they had a loss. You've had a loss before. You've had something happen and it kind of slipped through your hands. It was a loss. And then what happened was is they, they decided they didn't want to continue on with things. And God came to Joshua and says, what's wrong with you? Why are you 
so discouraged? Why are you have your face down to the ground and God wanted to kind of turn things around for them? And that's where we have in the scripture, then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king, his people, his city, his land. Do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Except this time you can carry off the plunder. What does this have to do with you today? I want to talk about another chance, trying again. Did you know that God wants you to get up and try again? He does. God wants you to not shrink back. I know that this is uh, a time when many times when it seems like when we're up against discouragement and defeat, that that's when we're going to shrink back. They say our economy may be in a retraction. What's a recession? I just flipped on the news the other day. They say a recession is when there's two quarters in, in, in a year of negative or, or no growth in the economy. They say we're supposed to have like a 3% economic growth on a regular basis. But when there is no growth, when there's no movement, when you're not buying and selling, because 70% of our economy, they say, is the consumer, is you transactioning and doing things, taking vacations and, and, and buying a, a vehicle, whatever it may be, clothes. No, you don't have to buy clothes. You've you got enough. No. But, but that, that, that's, that's when the economy goes forward. But listen. They say that when you're discouraged, you recede. You don't go to church. You're, you, you don't have a good outlook on your future. When you recede, when, when something has happened to you, then it would be easy to allow the enemy to take over and to kind of lead you instead of you leading your life. I want to talk about trying again. My brother, my sister, hey, my brother, my brother, it's all right. Just right now, let's not talk during this sermon, all right? Listen, the enemy wants to discourage you. The enemy wants to hold you back. But God wants to help you. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what's going on in your life. But don't sit this out. Don't allow the enemy to hold you back. Well, we see here that just a, uh, what God told him is don't be afraid. Don't allow the mistakes of the past to cause you to be afraid. Don't allow the things that have happened to you to cause fear to enter your life and to rule you. Fear is a powerful force at work in all of our lives. Fear is something that the enemy wants to use in your life. My brother, my sister, don't be afraid to get back up again and to try again. Here's what happened. To the Israelites, they came up to the city. It was a certain city. It's Ai there. It was a certain city. It was beyond Jordan. And it didn't work out. So they turned back and they started to say, what am I even doing this for? Why am I even involved in the things of the Lord? Why did he even start this journey? Maybe I should have just, we should have just, stayed on the other side of the river. Look at the loss we've had. Look at all the things and is it really worth it? Sometimes you're going to look at your life and you're going to say, is it really worth it to keep trying? Is it really worth it to be good to someone, to be nice? Is it really worth it to keep praying? Is it really worth it to live a righteous life? Maybe I should just 
throw in the towel. You see, these are tricks of the enemy in the summer of 2022 to get you derailed in your life. Listen, my brother, my sister, you got to make it through the summer. You, God wants to bring you out better this summer. Maybe God wants to do something in your life this summer that you never thought was going to happen. Once again, he says, don't be discouraged or don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't allow discouragement to rule you. If you messed up, listen, ask the Lord to forgive you. If you did something wrong, ask the Lord to forgive you. Pick yourself up and move on. I had a pastor every Sunday morning puts out a tweet or something and to like a small word. He said something like, you're going to have struggles in this life, but you got to learn to forgive and the things that come your way and you got to learn to move on. Here's what I want to say to you. That's what God is saying to you. You got to be willing to allow those things to, to fall and to go on with the Lord. Could you get me a bottle of water, Darren? <clears throat> Could you get me a bottle of water, my brother? Thank you. Here we go. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack AI. Kind of what I get out of this is, be serious about where you're at and be willing to go stronger. Approach it a little stronger. Approach it at, thank you, approach it in a different uh, way. He says, take the whole army with you. This time, the way you're going to approach the obstacle, you're going to be stronger. You're wiser for all the things you've been through. The enemy is not going to win. The enemy is not going to be able to control you and destroy you. So, one, don't be afraid. What is standing before you that is fearful? A health thing? What, what is standing before you that you're dealing with today? The word for you is don't be afraid. You can't change it no matter what. Joel says it this way. You could lay awake being fearful of it, but that's, that's just going to be unused energy. You can use those thoughts in a positive way. Listen, you're not going to change it by worrying about it, are you? No, you're not. So don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't, don't think that uh, the mistakes of yesterday are going to crush your life. Don't be discouraged. Listen, the only one that wants to discourage you is the enemy. Because the enemy doesn't want you to win. He goes on. He, what I got is, take it serious this time. Learn from the past, and now attack it in, in a different manner. He says, take the whole army with you. The fourth thing that I get out of it is God is with you. Where, where'd you get that? It says... Uh, for I have delivered you into the hands, for I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai. What I want to say to you, my brother, my sister, God is with you. He really is. It may not have worked last time, but it doesn't mean it's not going to work this time. What I want to say to you is, is that, that God hasn't given up on you. Don't give up on yourself. God has not left you. God has not abandoned you. So what I want to say is, why are you looking down on your life? Listen, the Lord has brought you a long way. You might think that you're still lacking. You're looking at your defeat. But let me tell you something. You're farther along than you used to be. I know you've been through some things. I know there's been things that have, have hurt you. I know that even maybe the enemy has got the best out of you at times. But where are you going to go from here? You're going to serve the world? What's the world going to do for you? What, where are you going to do? You, you're not going to serve the enemy. So what I want to say to you, your only hope is to stay in Christ. Your only hope is to keep following him. No, what do you mean by that? 
Because the enemy wants to talk you out of it. God wants to talk you into it. The enemy works overtime on you through attacks, through discouragement. The enemy works overtime on you to try to bring you down. You see, the enemy whispers in your ear, and many times you don't even know it. When you're going through something, through circumstances, the enemy does, does have, uh, have the ability to attack you. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, one time Job said, Job said he was going to and fro, fro, looking to see who he could attack. Paul says it this way, the enemy throws darts at you. Now, why would the Lord allow that? Why would the Lord allow things to happen to us? You don't live in a perfect world today. You don't. You live in maybe, I, I know that Jesus paid it all, but you're living in a, in a broken world where the enemy many times is trying to bring destruction. The good news is this, is that God came to seek and to save those who were lost. The good news is, that, that you do have redemption, you do have forgiveness, but that's on the side of God. But the rain does fall on the just and the unjust. You get sick just like someone that is not following the Lord gets sick. There's things that happen to us that we don't like. You know the difference, though, in your life? You got God. You can go to God. You can ask God to help you. Is that a big thing? I think it is. So when you're down, you don't go to the horoscope. When you're down, you don't go to, to man. Well, there's nothing wrong with counsel man. But listen, we go to God. You know who's going to help you this week? You know who's going to deliver you this week? You know who's going to help you out of your problem? Jesus is going to be there at your darkest hour. When you're down, that's when Jesus is going to help you. My brother, my sister, Jesus knows what it is to be attacked. Jesus knows what it is to hurt, to be lonely. He was in the garden and his, his, his friends were falling asleep, those closest to him. He was going through the hardest time in his life. It was only him and the Father. But he had the Father and it brought him through. You're going to make it through this thing. God is on your side. At the end of the day, you're going to look back. And you said, the devil tried to stop me. He's such a fool. He should have stopped long time ago. That God is on my side. And he's going to bring me through. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what's going on in your life. But I do know this. For the believer, there's no defeat known in your life. What do you mean? You win at the end of the day. One day, you're going to look down from heaven. One day, and you're going to think, why did I allow that thing to bother me so much? It meant nothing in light of eternity. What I'm saying is, you got a good life. You ought to be thankful. Listen, my brother, my sister, God's been good to you. He's not abandoned you. As a matter of fact, I kind of think he's just getting started at some things in your life. You got a good future. Is it roses all the time? I never said that. But you've seen worse days. You have. You've been in some spots before that were tough. And you're here today to tell about it. You've been attacked on every side. You've been kicked. You've been, people made fun of you. As a matter of fact, most never even believed that you would make it to where you're at today. But you have. But God in your life saved you and helped you. Here's what I wanted to say. Why are you going to throw it to the wind now? Why are you going to allow the enemy to rule now? We're not. We're going to pick ourselves out. God told him to get your face out of the ground. To don't, don't lie. Don't, don't take the back seat to no one. Did I discipline you? Yes. Did I allow some things to come in your life? Yes. But I did it because I love you. I did it because I have a plan for you. I'm getting you back on track. I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. But I'm with you and I'm going to help you and bring you through. 
So here's what I say. Here's what I say. When the enemy starts to talk and whisper in your ear, let them know that you're a child of God. You're not perfect. It's not, everything is not the way you'd like it, but you're in a better spot than he is, and you're moving forward. You're, you're, you're coming in alive. Tomorrow, you may have a breakthrough, and then every tear is going to be wiped away. Everything's going to make sense, and you're going to know that the hand of God's been on your life the whole time. My brother, and I'm Andy, my brother, the hand of God's on your life. It is. The hand of God is on your life. That's no small matter. You wouldn't be here today if the hand of God was not on your life. He's brought you to this day. He's known you from the beginning of time. He knew your name. He knew the things you'd go through. And he called you out of this world. He set you up on, on, on a higher ground. And he's cleansed you a little bit. He's kind of wiped you off a little bit. He's kind of wiped your knees when, when, when you got a, fell and scraped. He picked you up. He picked you up when you were discouraged. When everyone said it can't be, God stood by you. When everyone said, when everyone abandoned you, God's been there the whole time. My brother, my sister, if I was you, I'd keep praising the Lord. If I was you, I'd keep giving thanks to the Lord. Why? Because your God wins every time. You and God are a majority. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. It's Jesus that's going to help us. It's Jesus that's going to deliver us. It's Jesus that's going to work in our life. We trust in Jesus. We trust in Jesus. So we love you, Jesus. Jesus, the sweetest name I know. Jesus, the sweetest name I know. He's never left us or forsaken us. Thank you, Jesus, for staying on the cross. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for not giving up on mankind. Thank you for being the bridge to the Father. We love you and thank you. And I ask you to help your people this week, God. Help them this week. Lord, when the enemy comes in like a flood, raise up something. Do something in their life, we pray. Feel free to say this out after me. This is our confession to the Lord. This is us saying, God, we need your help. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my sin. Come into my life. Cleanse me. Help me. Work in my life. I need you in Jesus' name. Now, God, help us. Help your people. Help your people this week, please. Help your people this week. Cover them. In the midnight hour, send a couple angels to fight for them. Send a couple angels for their kids, for their grandkids, their family members. Lord, fight our battles, we pray. Those that ain't going to try to hurt us this week, would you put a stop to it? Would you right now, God, would you shut their mouths? Would you, would you put down any attack that the enemy's conspiring right now to do? In Jesus' name.